In this problem, we have a semicircular cylinder of weight W tilted by a horizontal force P such that the originally horizontal baseline is rotated by an angle alpha. Our task is to write down equilibrium equations describing this situation. The corresponding free body diagram involves four forces. The applied force P, the weight, the normal force at the contact, and the tangential or friction force at the contact. Let me observe that the force N must be perpendicular to the plate and therefore it is vertical and the force F must be tangential to the plate and therefore it must be horizontal. To quantify the equilibrium equations, let me identify the center of the semicircle by O, the center of mass where the weight is applied by C, the radius of the semicircle by R, and the distance between O and C by A. In principle, A can be found in a table or can be calculated. I will let you know the value of A at the end of the problem. So the free body diagram involves two pairs of forces. The horizontal forces P and F must balance each other and therefore they must be equal. And the vertical forces N and W also must be equal. Thus we observe that the four forces form two couples. The horizontal forces P and F form a negative clockwise couple and the vertical forces W and N form a positive or counterclockwise couple. Thus I can say that the moment equilibrium equation implies that the magnitudes of these two couples must be equal. To determine the magnitudes of these couples, we have to determine the distances between the horizontal and vertical forces. Let me look at the point D and draw a vertical line through D. An important property of this line is that it must be tangent to the surface of the circle at D and therefore it must be in the radial direction. Therefore, the vertical line will go through the center O. I will identify the point B as the intersection of the vertical line initiated at D and the horizontal line initiated at E. The point C is the center of mass and the point A is determined such that CA is perpendicular to BD. Or simply put, CA is the distance between two vertical forces, or CA is the appropriate arm for the couple formed by the vertical forces. To do the necessary calculations, I will observe that the angle EOB must be equal to P over 2 minus alpha. The angle COE must be 90 degrees. This is because CO 
must be the symmetry axis for the semicircle and therefore the angle C O A is equal to alpha. Now I'm ready to calculate the arms. The arm C A is simply equal to the length C O which is A times sine alpha. The arm B D is equal to the sum of O D and O B. O D is equal to the radius and O B could be found from the triangle E O B as R times sine alpha. Thus we can write down the moment equilibrium equation in the form P times the length BD must be equal to W times the length CA and uh, these are the explicit expressions that combine the last four lines. Now let me calculate the angle alpha. In order to do it I will rewrite the last equation in this form and denote this ratio P R over W A by beta and after simple rearrangements I will get that alpha is equal to arc sine of beta divided by 1 minus beta. An interesting observation about this equation is that, well, of course, arc sine must be such that its argument is less than 1. It means that beta has to be less than 1 half. If beta is larger than 1 half, which means if the force P is large, then the semicircle will flip and we will not have static equilibrium. At any rate, for beta less than one half, I can use this definition to calculate that the force P in order to be in equilibrium has to be less than one half W A over R and finally, I will exploit the fact that A is equal to 4R over 3P. This is known from a table. And therefore, uh, the maximum value of the force P, such that the circle does not flip is equal to 2 over 3p times w. 2 over 3p is a little bit larger than 0.2. Thank you very much.